Come join me in my creative space where we can paint, learn, and have a few laughs. So get comfy and let's get started. Hi everybody, Kat here. Thanks for joining me today. I am going to be painting a parsley plant today, a sprig of parsley for our watercolor herb series. Uh, this will be done in about three steps and it's a bit of a complicated leaf compared to others. So I've tried to narrow it down to three steps. I've practiced this a few times to see what method is best. And um, I think this is it. So let's get started, shall we? So let's start with a size six brush and every, every leaf is going to get the same color. It's a very watered down yellow green and Prussian blue. I'm using Arsh cold pressed. I have painted this parsley plant about four times. So this is the front of the arch. I happen to like the back of the arch paper. And unfortunately, this is the front side I'm ending up with. I don't know if you, you cook with parsley or not, but the sprig is each leaf is made up of three components. So they almost look like separate leaves, but that makes one. And they're spiny, they're spiky a little bit. And unlike coriander, uh, not coriander, cilantro. People mix this up, including myself, with cilantro. And it is not the same thing. Cilantro is more rounded. It definitely doesn't taste the same. I planted cilantro one year in our herb box that was kind of near our kitchen. And um, well, the yard wasn't that big that it wasn't all near the kitchen, but it was just, this was the closest to the kitchen. And the smell of it was so, I couldn't stand it. So I had to rip up the plant. <laughs> But I do eat it. I've eaten it in guacamole, and but I had no idea it was going to smell like that. I, I, I don't like the smell. You learn something new all the time. I like to, I liked gardening when I did it. I do it in pots now, if I do it. But I don't like the bugs, I have to say. I'm not thrilled with the bugs. Adding a bit more color, a bit more water. I hope you can see this. I tried to zoom in so you can see my painting first and foremost, and then the palette second. The water, you don't need to see that. I'll describe what I'm doing. If I speed the video along, it's because I don't think you're going to miss anything. I wouldn't speed along if I had, if I thought I had something important for you to hear or if you needed to watch me do something. I'm almost at 600 subscribers, guys. I'm very, you know, I know people have 600,000 subscribers, so they would laugh at my channel, but I am so very pleased and I thank every, each and every one of you for, for subscribing and watching and the people who comment, I thank you very much too. Your feedback really helps because I'm not a, a tech savvy person. Some people have, I know that some of the big channels because um, I've watched, I've watched a few kind of advice videos about how to get started and they have people doing the editing for them and um, I don't, I do all, I've learned, had to learn to do all that myself. And I also, you know, about the analytics, like reading about the statistics and uh, it's just so very daunting. <laughs> all I want to do is paint and maybe show, show, you know, like, like share it with people. That, that's what I want to do. And, um, all that to say, your feedback really helps me. 
to know what it is you like and what how, what you what maybe what level you're at would be good to know when you watch would be good to know some people it says in my statistics that i have more females than males and um more retirees but you know when i signed up to youtube i i didn't tell them i was a female nor did i tell them my age or if i was retired or not so i don't know how they know that and um so I'd like I really like to hear from you yourself. Now you see where I'm painting now. I'm no longer pre-wetting the leaves, just making sure I use watery enough paint so it dries to a light enough value for the first layer. There is a sketch at the end of the video if you're interested. And Please feel free to just erase what you find if something's a little more complicated than you than you were looking for. Just erase one or two of the of the um, the leaves. They kind of remind me of maple leaves, actually, a little bit. Okay, to do the stem, I'm going to get some lemon yellow. Drop that right down the center, and that will we will fix this up. It's not going to stay lemon yellow. And lemon yellow is is semi uh, opaque, so you can paint over. As you see, I paint out over this green, and even though typically the green is is a darker color, the 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 lemon yellow shows up. Okay, I'm gonna dry this completely and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. The second step now is to is to add the same color. It's going to be a little more concentrated and I may mix it with the, the other meat, this color. So this is, oh yeah, this is Viridian Green with the uh, yellow orange. And so I may alternate between the two. So this one was our light one only because I added so much water. So I'm gonna start with this since we, that's what we started with. And I'm going to wet down what we just painted. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I, want, I wanted to do this in steps. So I, I wet this. I'm going in with more concentrated green and I'm going to Going to put the paint on the tips. And down the center where the vein goes, it's a little darker. And the two extensions of this leaf I will not be doing yet because I don't want it to bleed into each other. Okay, just adding some there. I think I'm going to use a smaller brush for this uh, step next time because I'm not getting a nice point. Okay, and I'm going to take my hospital card, just any any plastic card, and very gently work my way up from the tip to there. And it does not have to be straight. It does not have to be, uh, uh, there doesn't have to be many of them. But I think the lighter your touch and the more squiggly it is, the nicer it looks. And what this does, it just adds a little bit of not only color, but it adds a little bit of um, movement to your leaf so you can see where there's lighter spots and darker spots. But don't go to, in too, 
too quickly with this because it's very easy to overdo. And the, you know, that's something that I'm always guilty of. I'm doing it right now. I'm telling you not to do it and I'm doing it right now. <laughs> there. I will pick up some of that. Okay, now I'm going to, going to move to this one. This leaf is on top of this one. So I'm going to do the under one first. I'm going to wet it with one brush and paint it with another. And I don't particularly like painting pointy things when I'm trying to be so um, deliberate and specific. I kind of like to paint a tiny bit more loose than this, but it's always a good idea to start when you're learning to paint, to do paint tightly. Some people will tell you it looks contrived or, but it helps you to learn about the objects that you're painting, about their shape and lights and shadows. And then when you know all those details, then you can start painting more loosely. Now with my card, again, that corner to the stem here. And I'm deliberately going the opposite direction that usually I would go down, but that would be too smooth. So I'm trying to go up so that my, my hand is not able to stay straight. And the more delicate these are, the better. If this is the only video you've watched of this er watercolor herb series, there's there are going to be a few. I got a request for the parsley, so I'm doing parsley today. And I also had a request for rosemary. So that will probably be next or the second one because I'm, I'm also going to be doing chamomile because I happen to love chamomile. Okay, and I'm gonna come down there. You see, that's so smooth because I did it, I didn't do it backwards. I must apologize if some of you watch me because you like my my chatting i i am not chatting as much because i have filmed this this is this is take number four and i'll tell you i've been in between all this we've had a big power outage 
here because we had a, a ice storm, a mini ice storm, not like back in 97, but it, a lot of Montreal was out of power and it's Easter weekend and there's, anyway, it's just been a bit of a crazy time. And I wasn't pleased with the painting and, and <laughs> if you saw it, you'd probably say it looks exactly like this one, but I'm just very fussy with myself and um, I didn't think I wasn't pleased. I didn't want to put it out there. And so I, I f I'm not sure what I've already said and what I didn't say. <laughs> so I'm not talking as much, which some of you might be happy about. There, this is just adding a tiny bit of color in. We are not done. We still have the third, the third uh, layer to do. I will add a tiny bit of more of this color in on either side of this. Just like I'm just, just touching, barely touching it. And then we're going to wet it all after. And then you won't have any hard lines. You can do it right away if you like. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry. Oh no, I didn't do this one. The It's one of those um the thirds of the leaf and it's kind of overlapped now i'll let this dry and be right back now the third step is i'm going to be adding a little bit more shadows where there are some overlaps and then do a little bit of tweaking so that's where this color comes in. I didn't use this color, by the way, just yet. This is the um, Viridian with the yellow orange. I didn't use it in this one. And perhaps that's what I didn't like about my other, my other paintings. I have one here, um, I've got one there. I've done it four times, as I said. I don't hate them all. I just, there was something about, about them that I wasn't pleased with. So this is a nice cool color and I'm going to be using it for the shadows, the obvious ones. So this leaf is under this one. So I'm just going to tap in a little bit of that color. It's a tiny bit too watery. I, sh I really need to change my brush because this brush holds so much water. I, I, I don't know how it's possible, but it does. I'm going to use a very small Nope, that's not it. I'm going to use a really small brush for this. It's a synthetic uh, brush, so it doesn't hold as much water. a tiny bit here too. I think I'm going to mix a, it a bit with this color. I find it a bit too dark. See if I like that a little better. Oops. I didn't tape my paper down. I you ha you don't you can if you like. I should have maybe because it just flipped on me if you saw that. Just very 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 tiny dots. Very small. Over here too. First, before I go in with the super dark, I'm going to go in with the, the third green that I haven't used yet. I'm going to go in behind this one. Just soften that out. I'm quite happy with that. It's casting a shadow. No, I am going to use this. This is very dark. For the leaves that are touching the stem, I'm using a drop or two of the really dark green so they stand out from the stem. 
otherwise if I don't use a dark enough color they're just going to blend in too much and you won't see the leaf. So where this meets here So this third layer is all about tweaking. I'm sorry that my paper is buckling. See, this is um, very expensive Arsh paper and it buckles. You can see my paper is not soaking wet and it is buckling. And when you pay that much for paper, you kind of have expectations. You know, you think maybe it shouldn't be buckling on you. So between this one and the cool color, I think I'm going to just um, try to add a couple of little dots in between where the each section of the leaves are are separated just just to give it a little bit of interest and maybe a little bit more in the veining area I'll do the darker for that part I like to sometimes um, pick up on the imperfections in the in a leaf or a flower petal. It's what makes it beautiful. Just adding a little more color to this one. I find it a little bit uh, dull to look at. And that's the initial green that we used to do that. I think I'm going to do that here too just in the ends. The the center of a parsley is kind of yellowy and the veins are not dark actually, they're light. So, but because I would not want to mask out every vein, I was not interested in that. <laughs> I just did them very, with a light hand. And they do still come out dark, but I, I, I'm happy with them. So for this one, I think I'm going to add a bit of veining in here that you can't see. It's the very, very tip of my brush. Like that. Just putting a couple of dots of shadow in where, you know, the leaves kind of intersect and the light wouldn't get in there. Like behind there. Behind here. All these tiny little details make make a big difference in your painting. What do you think? Let me know in the comments what you think. And let me know if you're going to paint it. I think right there. Just adding in a little bit of that veining that um, this one I, th I found my hand was too smooth while doing it and I didn't like the outcome. So I'm trying to be, I'm trying to do that same effect with my brush without touching it too heavily. Just adding a bit of color to this one. And this one too, I need a tiny bit of color in, in. I think I'm going to put them at the ends again. And some here. Put them, I mean the dots of paint, but when I say them,
Now I'm going to soften all of the, those marks out. Maybe this one. Maybe that one's missing a teeny tiny bit of something. And this one too. So in hindsight, I would not use the the viridian and the orange, the yellow orange with the cadmiums. Don't don't I you don't need it. I I changed my mind both times. I didn't I didn't use it. So you don't need it and uh, I think you'll like it without I bought a lot of cheap watercolor paper from the dollar store and I use that paper to test out my color mixes before I do a video. And I always start out with the intention to keep the swatches and record the colors I use so I can refer back to them. But I just, I often don't. Do you, do you keep your swatches? Do you keep a list of the colors you use? I come up with these great greens and things like that often and then I say okay you're gonna remember that no no you don't have to write it down and then of course I forget so. just gonna soften that out and here I'm just using a smidge of the dark just where the the little scratches you made meet if you can get this this brush has like a hair uh, for a point so I can do that sometimes there that I like so much better now <laughs> in one year I won't be able to see this the way my eyesight's going <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, everything just seems to be getting smaller and smaller <laughs> so once again this is the leaf that caused me to repaint this thing four times because it's bugging me and I don't like it and I still don't like it but I am not doing this a fifth time I think that it's it's okay I think it's good enough I think I'm being almost ridiculous about it so just adding in a couple of little veins here and there so that's it for our parsley sprig. I'm gonna call this done. If you decide to try this, consider joining the Facebook group that I started. The link is in the description box and you can we can share our work with each other. And if you like this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Happy watercoloring, bye bye.